I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I So what we have here is the cabinet sitting upright, the speakers right there, and the chassis is here. What you want to do, what I need to do, is protect myself from this chassis. And I need to hook up the speakers and I need to hook up the antenna. The easiest way to do that, you can take the speakers out if you want. You still can't touch the chassis. <laughs> so I will put the chassis back in the radio and slide it forward. And hook up the speaker wires. This one here. This is not plugged in. This radio is not plugged in, by the way. These speaker wires are very loose. What I'm going to do is crimp this as a little connector right there. I'm just going to crimp that a little bit with the pliers to make it a little tighter. Uh, sp loose speaker wires can kind of rattle, make a noise, which you don't want. An electrical noise. It's still loose. Wow. Okay, that's better. Good fit. And the other side. That one's kind of loose too. Interesting. Let's give it a little crimp. <coughs> All right, our speaker is hooked up. Now I'll push the chassis forward so that the knobs come out. There's the uh, knob shafts here and here. That's about as far as it goes, yeah. I will not fasten the chassis to the cabinet yet. Um, that's a bit premature, don't need to do that. Uh, but I do need the antenna so that this thing will, if it's gonna work, it will pick something up. Um, so I'll grab that. <coughs> and the person who kindly put B in Y over here help me, except I still think that's green. The yellow one goes on there, the blue or green one goes on there. And now I have kind of a precarious setup here, but it will work. The next thing I do is to I need to do is to protect myself from shock by remounting the knobs. They don't have to go on all the way, um, but what you're trying to do is is keep from having to touch the the radio chassis. So I'll hold the chassis in the back again. Again, so important. It's not plugged in. So I'll hold the chassis from the back push a knob on a little ways, and I don't care if it's the one with the arrow on it or not. Um, I'm just pushing it on there far enough for it to work. Same thing here. Push that on a little ways. Turn it back around to make sure I'm still okay back here, and I am. Ah, now we're approaching the moment of truth. We have our radio, there's the on-off switch, there's our dial, um, our, our tuning knob. We have an outlet. The outlet plugs into our dim bulb tester. <coughs> just 
just like that. Make sure the dim bulb tester says it's off. It does. And I'm going to plug in the dim bulb tester's cord, which is polarized. Probably in this case it doesn't matter, but it is. And it's the moment of truth. This radio has no light, so when you turn it on, you won't hear or you won't see a light here. But hopefully we'll hear sound coming out of the speaker. So what do I expect from the dim bulb tester? The dim bulb tester will do three things uh, that tells me this is working okay. The first one is when I turn it on, I've got the radio turned on here. So this is controlling the power to the radio now. When I first turn it on, this will glow very brightly for a few seconds, but just a few seconds. And what it's doing in those few seconds when it's growing very brightly is a lot of current is rushing through here and charging up all those capacitors we replaced back in there. But once that charging is done, then this bulb will dim way back down again. And then it will slowly start to brighten. And it's brightening because the tubes are coming on. The tube heaters, uh, the tubes are starting to work and this bulb will start to brighten up a bit but it should not get white hot it should not be as bright as this bulb can get when it's in your refrigerator um, that means something's wrong and once it's on we can because we're isolated from the chassis we can turn the volume up and down and we can turn the channel selector back and forth without getting shocked uh, remember, this is a hot chassis, All-American 5. It will shock you when you least expect it. It will, it will give you a buzz. And if you have any kind of condition or a pacemaker or something, it could literally kill you. So don't do that. So the radio is on. It's plugged into our dim bulb tester, which is switched off. Our dim bulb tester is plugged into the wall outlet here at the house. And this is my first time, too. You're seeing this as I'm seeing this. And I always get a little excited to see what's going to happen. So again, flare to pretty hot, pretty bright, dim way down, and then come back to some kind of glow. Let's see. There's a bright, dimming down, capacitors are charging. Light is almost out completely. I'll turn the volume up. There's our tube noise. Now you see a little, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little orange glow. Those filaments are just glowing in there, which is exactly what they should be doing. Uh, and our volume control works. Oh, nice volume on this radio. Um, let me see if there's a station out there. By the way, I don't listen to AM in my area. It's um, most of it's talk radio crap, so I don't listen to it. But let's see if we can pick one up. back and sign the deal and go. Uh, do you feel that way or are you, are you a fan of sticking with that conference? Well, returning players you know, from the 10 and 3 program and then having Jeff Tedford come back and put his stamp back on this program, everybody's very excited. Oh, nice. Reese for the overnight low. For Wednesday, look for a mix of clouds and sunshine. The high temp is 81 degrees. Clear skies tomorrow night, 51 degrees for the low temp. More sun. Three run home. Three for the raise. tells our news partner KGW they want to stay on the street and believe that. 
который был сделан на первый вид. Хотя, мне, мне кажется, это нелогично, но все равно давайте попробуем людям объяснить. Это логично, да, но я, к сожалению... Hmm. Sounds like a Russian language station, which we have a couple of in this area. Nice sensitivity. It's picking up a lot of radio stations. Another Russian language station. If they're playing, uh, if they're speaking Ukrainian, I apologize. But above his cash offer. To a home buying company, he would have missed out on that extra money. Yeah. We've described roof deck, your deck, your All right. I'm very happy with that. <clears throat> Um, what I've been watching as I'm tuning back and forth and playing with the volume is this bulb and it's staying at that same constant orange glow which is an indicator of how much current this is drawing. It's not drawing as much as it will when it gets plugged directly into the wall but it's not dropping much right here. It's dropping a bit of voltage in this, in this bulb. So this is working perfectly. This had it gone bright at the beginning and stayed bright, I would have shut it off instantly uh, because that meant that something was going wrong in here, that we, did, we, that we screwed something up. But boy, it plays great. I, <laughs> I'm impressed. Huh, well, it's always a relief when it works. <laughs> It's always a relief when it works. I want to show you one other thing before we end this video, and that is um, the ramifications of plugging this in one way or the other, the safety aspects of this. Let me unplug the dim bulb tester. If you're going to repair a radio, the only thing you really need to have is one of these. It will save your radio project. Uh, it will tell you really quickly whether your radio is burning up or whether it's going to behave itself. In this case, it told us that it was going to behave itself, and that's fabulous. So we have a radio here. Uncle Bob gave us a radio. That's okay. What I'm going to do now is turn this around. I'm going to unplug the antenna. This radio is not plugged in, right? Can I unplug the antenna to get it out of the way? I'm going to take a voltmeter, this very voltmeter right here, and measure AC voltage. And one side of this voltmeter, I'm standing barefooted because it's summer. I'm standing barefooted right now on a concrete floor. That means I'm as grounded as I probably can be unless I grab a uh, water pipe. So I, if I were to make a mistake with this radio, I could get a pretty violent shock, and I don't want one. So what I'm going to do is measure the voltage, the AC voltage on this chassis uh, depending on, I'm going to plug the plug into the regular wall outlet one way, measure the voltage, turn the plug over, plug it back in, measure the voltage again, and we'll see um, we'll see what the difference is. I had to make sure the radio was on. So I'm going to put my black probe on an earth ground. Um, which I have over here. You can't see, but you'll have to take my word for it. I'm plugging this into um, the wall socket with the red dot down. Remember, there's a red dot on here. The red dot down. And my reading says that makes this line neutral and this line hot. So we'll see. We'll plug this in. We know the radio is working because the tubes are glowing and we'll read the voltage on the chassis 
And there we are, 122 volts AC, right there. If I touch that, again, my bare feet are on the concrete floor. If I touch that, I'd get zapped hard enough to make me swear or have a heart attack, one of the two. If I turn this plug over so that the red dot is up, And again, the radio doesn't care, so it's working just fine. And I touch this, and I get 0.137 volts AC. So there's a little bit of AC leaking into the chassis, but that's a much safer condition than with the plug turned around. The problem is, well, as I said early on, whoever painted that dot on was trying to protect um, the customer or his family or something from being electrocuted. But when this red dot goes to uh, the hot side, the chassis is safer. When the red got dot goes to neutral, the chassis is hot, 125 volts. That's why we don't touch this. That's why we don't we don't uh, mess with that when the radio is plugged in. It will hurt. So all right, not plugged in. Our uh, repair has been a success. I will take these two knobs off, put them back in their respective box, or put them back in their box so I know where they are. I'll take the chassis out because Oop, and unplug the speakers. Because I want to clean this. Uh, there's nothing in the <laughs> there's nothing in the repairman's repair person's manual that says you have to clean the radio chassis when you finish recapping them, which we did. Uh, on the other hand, I can't stand leaving it dirty like this. So I'm going to clean the metal. I am also going to try to bring back uh, this case. Uh, it was shiny and beautiful when GE sent it out the factory. So I'll bring back this case. And that's another whole video is how to clean this and clean this up. So we'll see you next time. Be safe.